Hello folks, Jason Crespin here at JC's Bees. Today I want to help you get your hives ready for winter. What we're looking at here is a couple of my 10 frame hives that I will be taking through winter. Now one of the very first things I like to check is the food stores. On a colony like these, I like them to have right around 100 pounds of food. Um, but keep in mind I'm in central Ohio and we get really cold winters. So you're going to want to talk to a local beekeeper to see right where your food storage should be sitting. If your hive is not up to weight and you need to continue feeding, I think I personally would be a little bit reluctant on feeding two to one and may even resort to going three to one. That's going to be three parts sugar, one part water. Um, it's my experience that when we start to get into these cold nights, and we just had our first frost a couple days ago, um, once you start to get to that temperature, the, the moisture in the syrup can create some condensation within the hive. So for that reason, I think I would resort to a three to one uh, mixture on the syrup, or maybe even something like a fondant, or just feeding some sugar cakes right now. Um, that, that would be another option. So all good things to think about right here. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is screen bottom boards. All of these hives here have screen bottom boards 365 days a year. They're never closed, they're never blocked, they're always fully venting, and I like that. It's done very well for my bees in the summer and in the winter. Um, do I believe they contribute a whole lot to varroa mite uh, drop? No. Do I think they help the colony? Yes. So I use them. A lot of people believe that they're a great help in uh, counting mites because you get your mite drop through on your sticky board, you're able to count them, but that's not why I use them. I use them just for the airflow, and that's it. In the winter, it's helped greatly with condensation. But you can't just use just the screen bottom board. You also need to provide an upper entrance. So let's pretend for a second. Let's pretend this box is up here and this box is down here. So now we have a hole right in the middle of here. Um, a lot of people are gonna consider that, if that hole was there, an upper entrance. But when it comes to condensation, that's not good enough for me. I like to see a hole all the way at the top, just underneath the inner cover. What's gonna happen is that moisture is gonna enter the hive through the screen bottom. It's gonna come up, it's gonna hit that warm cluster, and it's gonna to wanna to condense. And it's gonna to wanna to condense on the bottom of your inner cover. If you provide a vent hole right at the base or the very bottom edge of your inner cover, that moisture can escape and it doesn't condense. And it's worked very, very well for keeping my bees dry during the winter. So what I do is I use an insulated hive cover. It's got a little notch on the bottom lip um, that acts as an upper entrance. It works very, very well for me along with the screen bottom board. Now this insulated hive cover is just a piece of one inch foam that you would get from Lowe's or Home Depot. And then it's wrapped with some three quarter board and uh, it's got a couple pieces of Luon or MFD to pancake the foam in the middle. Um, this has worked very well for me, and it's worked so well that I've actually got them for all of my big hives now. Um, so that's something to consider, and if you're not one to uh, go out in the wood shop and build your own stuff, um, check out my Amazon store. I have some insulated lids in there that I'm hearing some very good things about. So that's another option. Now, you new beekeepers probably aren't aware of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and enlighten you. Cold weather will not kill your bees. Moisture will. Um, I know a lot of beekeepers that like to wrap their hive with tar paper or hive wraps. And that's great if that works for you. For me, I see that as a waste. You're doing a couple different things there. You're making it harder to get in and check the food stores midwinter when we get a warm day. and you're also providing more insulation and heat to the colony. So what's gonna to happen to the colony when the sun's out on, on a winter day and it's beating on that black wrapping of the hive? What's gonna happen? I'm gonna tell you, this is just my theory. What's gonna happen is it's gonna heat that hive up. Maybe not a whole lot, but a little bit. And then what's gonna happen is those bees are gonna break cluster, okay? They're gonna go out and they're gonna start eating. Okay. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but at the same time, on the same kind of weather, 
sun's beating on these hives and they're not heating up quite as much. The bees stay a little bit more clustered and I like that and here's why. You see, warm days in the winter cause the bees to be able to move around a little bit more and when they move around a little bit more they're burning more calories. To make up for the calories they're losing they have to eat. So if you're providing some, some black material on the outside for the sun to beat against they're going to go through all that food stores a lot quicker than what they would if you would have just not wrapped and provided a wind block. So that's just my two cents on it. If you like wrapping and it works for you, do it by all means. Do what works for you. Not all of these different scenarios work for everybody. You kind of got to find your own niche. Now as far as your mouse guards, those are very important too because what will happen when the weather gets cold little mouse he wants to find a warm place too right get out of this cold weather so he's going to go right up in the entrance of your hive he's going to make a little nest right up in the comb and destroy it and uh that's not what you want so get you some rabbit wire a uh, quarter a half inch hardware cloth and uh just staple it over the entrance and then you know use your entrance reducer to block off the rest they only need a couple inches to get out in the winter time so that's fine and you can see I've got mouse guards on any place that there's a possibility of a mouse getting in. Now one little tip I'll give you on the mouse guards. Um, I use a staple gun to put mine on. You want to make sure you use short staples. If you use long staples, what's going to happen is the little legs on the side of the staple, they're going to break off when you go to remove it in the spring. And then you got to go back with pliers to pull all that out. So use a short staple. Um, if you've only got a couple hives, just use thumbtacks. Makes it easier in the spring. You just go out and pull the tacks off, slide your uh, mouse guard out of the way, and you're done. Um, another thing I want to talk about that you can go ahead and do um, is installing a, a feeder ring on top of your hive. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's basically a ring the same size as your box, about two inches tall, and it just gives you a place during the winter where you can lay some newspaper on top of the frames and pour in some dry sugar. Um, this is a huge, huge help to the bees. It does a couple things. It provides food when they run out. It gives you a place to put that food up on top of the frames because otherwise there wouldn't be room without this feeder ring. Um, and the dry sugar also collects moisture within the hive. So any condensation is going to go right absorbed into that sugar and make it into a giant sugar cake for the bees to eat when they run out of food down below. So. Um, you know, this is a good time to go ahead and get that on. Um, if you want, go ahead and put you a piece of newspaper up there and pour some dry sugar if you think uh, you're, if you have concerns about the moisture or them running out. Personally, I do not see me having any food problems until probably the first of the year. So I just went ahead and added my uh, feeder rings, but there's nothing placed with inside of them yet. So I hope this little rundown has helped you out. Um, if you have any questions or comments about wintering, um, a video maybe that you would like to see, please leave it down below and uh, I'll see what I can do. If you like the video, throw me a thumbs up, help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and make sure you click on that little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching folks.